Hello boys and girls, welcome back to Rock the JVM. I'm Daniel, and in this video I'm going to show you a trick with givens in Scala 3. This video is quite uninspiredly called anti-givens because you can use the absence of givens to run some interesting results. So for this video I recommend that you become familiar with how implicits or givens work in Scala 3. I have a bunch of videos here on the Rock the JVM channel if you want to check those out. And write some code with me in this video as usual and whenever you need to get back to this trick just refer back to this video or to the written form at the blog with the link in the description as always. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to create a small object here with a main method in case we need to test something, but we probably won't because we're going to manipulate the compiler into enforcing some restrictions that we want. So here's the deal. I'm going to write a small method. I'm gonna say process lists. I'm gonna type it with two type arguments, A and B, and I'm gonna have two lists, L, uh, list of A and a list of B. I'm going to simply call them LA and LB as a list of B. And the implementation or the rest of the signature of this method is not really that important. Let's say I'm going to return a list of tuples of A and B, and I'm going to run a for comprehension. So for A in LA and B in LB, I'm going to yield A and B the tuple. Now, this method is quite straightforward for those of you who have done some Scala before. So this isn't really that special. This combines all the elements in a cross product. Now, the problem that I want to expose in this video sounds something like this. If you have a method that looks something like this, that somebody else wrote in a library or in your team or something like that, you might want to enforce that these two type arguments A and B may be equal. So you want to make this process lists method be only applicable to two types that are identical. Now, for the situation where you can actually modify this code, the solution is really very simple. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to create another method. Let's call this process list, same type. And I'm going to run you through the solution. I'm going to simply remove the type argument B, and I'm going to enforce that the two lists are typed with the same type. So the compiler will not really accept uh, two lists of separate types, for example, a list of ints and a list of strings while calling this process lists same type method. So this is how you can enforce that two types are identical. But what if you cannot really modify the signature of this method? Maybe it belongs to some library or to some code that you cannot really modify. So I'm going to run the solutions that I'm going to sh uh, show you in this video in separate objects so that I don't have to really modify code. So I'm going to have, let's call this same type naive or the situation where you can also modify the code. Because if you want to enforce that this method be only applicable for two type arguments that are, are the same type, you can simply remove the type argument and just enforce that in one type. An alternative solution would be to say, let's call this, I'm actually going to copy this method again, and I'm going to, let's call this process list same type v2. If you really cannot modify this process list, you can wrap it in some other kind of API, and you can simply call the library method process list with the types a and a, and you can pass in the LA and LB lists just as fine. So you're basically wrapping this library API that you cannot really modify. But the problem is that there's nobody preventing you from actually invoking this method in your code. Even so, there are solutions for enforcing the same type. Now, the harder problem is to determine or make the compiler determine that the types A and B must be different. So the, the other situation that I wanted to talk to you about is what if you're only available to process these lists only if the type A and B must be different. So you need to enforce different types. In other words, I would like to say something like val, let's call this combined lists as process lists with, let's say, list one, two, three, and a list of strings like black and white. And that would be okay. So this one should be okay because the types of the lists are different. And the val, let's call this not okay lists as process lists with list one, two, three, and a list of the same type, let's say list four and five. This should not be okay. 
So let's say that for whatever reason, you want to enforce that the type arguments A and B must be different. So right now this code not only compiles, but it runs very well. So it just runs fine. Now this problem is much harder than the first of enforcing equality of types, because even if you have access to the signature of this method, so if you can change any code, there's nobody guaranteeing you that the types A and B must be different. So there are no real obvious techniques for enforcing this not equality of types. And for that, I'm also going to go back to the earlier solution because all this ties together. And I'm going to give you a third solution using a synthesized type for the compiler. So there is a type that's called equal colon equal that takes two type arguments, say A and B. And the compiler can generate or create or synthesize instances of this particular type wherever we create methods requiring an implicit value of this type or a given value of this type in skull 3. So for example, I can solve the earlier problem where I force the equality between two types in the following way. I can say process lists same type v3, and I'm going to type them with a and b, the two types. I'm going to pass my la list of a and lb list of b, and I'm going to return a list of tuples a and b, but here I'm going to add another argument list with a using clause. I'm going to say using, and I'm going to have an instance of a equal b. So notice that I'm using this in an infix style because it, it takes two type arguments. And here I can say process lists with the lists la and lb just fine. So in this case, I can move these above and instead of calling the library API process lists, I'm going to use this one. So process lists, same type v3, and I'm going to compile my code. And you're going to see that the process list, same type v3 doesn't work for lists of different types. That is because wherever the compiler requires the presence of an implicit or a given instance of this equality type, the compiler will synthesize it only for the situation where a is equal to b. So for the second case, not for the first. All right. So I'm going to move these below for the second problem where I want the types to be different. And I'm going to get back to process lists. So I wanted to show you the presence of this very weird equality type that the compiler can synthesize values for wherever it requires an implicit argument or a using clause. Now let me recompile my code to get in the green again. And instead of same type naive, I'm going to have same type because the solutions are really not that naive with this using clause here. So notice that we can now create or enforce type equality by creating this clause here, this using clause that A must be equal to B. Unfortunately, there is no equivalent for the difference between styles because in this case, the compiler would have to generate an infinite amount of possible instances of the supposed not equality between types because we can define as many types as we want, right? So I'm going to create another object. I'm going to have, for example, different types as the name. And I'm going to show you a technique for how to test the absence of an implicit or a given instance that the compiler can synthesize. And that is through an import. I'm going to say Scala util not given. Now this import is slightly special because not given instances are synthetically generated by the compiler, much like this equality type. So instances of not given for a type are automatically synthesized if the compiler fails to find a given instance of that type. So if the compiler can't find a given A or a given T or any type we want, then the compiler will generate a not given so for our particular problem, if we only want to process the list that have different types, all we have to do is to test the non-existence of the equality type between A and B. So our API would look something like this. Let's call this process list different type. I'm going to pass the two arguments A and B, and I'm going to pretty much copy the rest of the stuff. 
And instead of a using of an instance a equals b, I'm going to use not given typed with this type. So if the compiler cannot find a given a equals b, then the compiler will generate an opposite of that. So it will generate a not given instance between a and b. And in this case, I'm going to simply call process lists with la and lb. And this particular API will automatically enforce that the types a and b are different. And to prove that, I'm going to copy them in this object, and I'm going to call this combined lists with process list, list one, two, three, and list black and white. This should be okay because there is no instance of int equals string, but this one will not compile. So let's call this okay, not okay. Let's call this should not compile. And also let me ensure that I'm calling the right method here, process list different type and process list different type in both cases. And let me compile my code. And at compile time, the compiler will not compile this line 38. That says no implicit argument of type not given of int equals int. That is because the compiler can find an instance of int equals int. And so this not given, the opposite, will not be generated by the compiler. And so the compiler will be unable to use this method on the same types. So as I mentioned earlier, we won't be able to even compile code that calls process list with different type and actually using the same type arguments here. There's nothing to test in main because the compiler automatically enforces this rule for us. So this is a trick that very few people know in Skull 3 on how to enforce the absence of a given in your code. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and click the like button for me and subscribe to the Rock the JVM channel. I release videos I try every week. Also leave a comment and leave me feedback. I read every single comment. Check me out on Twitter and LinkedIn. I post fresh updates on upcoming material. And check out my website at rockthejvm.com and I have lots of content and courses on Scala and functional programming and Awk and Apache Spark and Cats and all sorts of goodies about that. Until the next video, I'm Daniel signing off.